Most of the time, people think of soil as dirt, just plain and simple old dirt. It's also often thought of as all brown, crumbly, and with worms mixed in. For those of you who have visited construction sites, however, you know that's simply not the case. Soil is much more complex than that, a mixture of non-living and living components. Soil can greatly affect the kind of plants and, in turn, animals that live in a given area. Soils are generally divided up into several layers, dubbed horizons by the scientists who study them, and although it can be difficult determining the boundaries of these horizons, each horizon contains a distinct mixture of materials to set it apart from the others. Let's start on top with the superficial most layer, the O, or organic, horizon. If you were to go outside right now and look at the soil, you would see lots of plant matter in the O horizon, such as twigs, grass, and leaves, as well as the occasional bit of animal matter, too. While this may be true for the upper part of the O horizon, as you dig deeper, the plant and other organic material that was whole and complete on the surface has become partially decomposed due to bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and many other small animals, up to and including burrowing mammals. Due to all of the biomatter in the O horizon, lots of different biological organisms rely on the O horizon for many of their biological needs. As you go deeper into the O horizon, it gradually turns into the A horizon. The A horizon, like the O horizon above it, also supports a high level of biological activity. Composed of both organic remains from the O horizon and many mi mineral materials, such as sand, clay, and silt, the A horizon is slowly leached of clays, aluminum, silicates, iron, and humus, not hummus, partially decomposed, which is de partially decomposed organic material. These different soil components move down through the soil until they finally reach the B horizon. Many plant roots find their home in the B horizon, which is composed of the various substances that we just talked about. As these various substances are deposited in the B horizon from the A horizon, they may form distinctive banding patterns. As you go deeper in the B horizon, we reach, you guessed it, the C horizon. The deepest layer of soil, the C horizon consists of something called weathered parent material. Essentially, this means that it is composed of partially broken down bedrock, the underlying rock formation beneath the soil. The rock can become partially broken down via roots, frost, and water. Beneath the sea horizon, we have the unweathered parent material, or the bedrock. Numerous factors can affect soil and soil composition. Climate can affect rates of erosion, weathering of parent materials, and rates of organic decomposition, amongst other things. The kinds of biological organisms in a certain area can also be affected by climate, and which in turn can affect the amount of mixing of soils being done by burrowing animals, and the amount of biomatter on top of the soil. Water flow and erosion can also be affected by topography, while the type of parent material or bedrock underlying the soil can also have large effects. Finally, time can also have a large effect on soils. Check back soon for our next lesson in the Terrestrial Biomes Ecology series, in which we investigate temperatures, atmospheric circulation, and precipitation.